And intimacy with God is not an option. Sometimes, you know, uh, being in business and also being in the church, we can get so busy that we have no time to spend time with Jesus. But I make it a point to tell myself that it's not an option. Spending time and being intimate with Jesus is not an option. You cannot decide to be in the presence of God only when you have time. A call to discipleship is a call to be in the presence of the master. You'll find that when Jesus was here on earth, his disciple followed him. That's why they were known as followers. When he went off, he said, I send you another comforter, all right? another advocate, so that they continue to be followers. And this time is, uh, this time is even better. The Holy Spirit come and live within us. And therefore, we can become intimate and close with God all the time. We need to spend time instead of just spending time with ourselves. So intimacy with God is not a reward, but a grace of God. So if it was a reward, then you are going to depend upon your own performance to get it. All right? But it's the other way around. So if you, if, if you depend on your own performance, uh, activities, then what is going to happen is you get very angry when you don't feel the presence, when you don't feel what is, you know. But because you know that intimacy is a relationship with God, it's a 24-7 thing. And because I hear God all the time, I know Him, and therefore it's so much easier for me to go into prayer. I go into prayer because I love Him, not because I want to earn His love. I spend time to meditate because I love Him. I love his word. His word is like a love letter to me. So I love his word. All right. And therefore, I spend time. I think many of you would remember you first dated your spouse. And then uh, in those days, you know, uh, you might get letters or you might get uh, SMS or you might get uh, uh, whatever uh, ways that your beloved will send to you. Now, what do you do? Uh, when you are lonely and when your this sweetheart is not around or she wasn't around, then what do you do? You most probably take out those letters to read them. Is there on your handphone, you'll turn on and you'll look through it again and again, especially when the part that she say, I love you very much. I think about you all the time. Wow, you read that a thousand times, right? Why? Because you are already very intimate, very close with this girl whom you love. Okay, so this is this is what it, it means that when you read those letters, it's not because that you want to earn her love, but you know that she has already loved you and you are really in love with her. And intimacy with God is not so much as being consumed with the development of self. It's not so much about me being humble and all that, but you but but you see, it is becoming dead to self and become alive in Christ and Christ likeness come forth. Means that when people see me, they must see Christ. They must see the love of Christ. They must see this agape love showing up. So it's a journey inward so that the journey outward may have an outward expression. That might be the expression so that people can acknowledge that there is a God. Okay. So your intimacy with God is also for the glory of God and also for evangelism. Because like Gypsy Smith said that there is a fifth gospel. People may not read all the four gospels, but they will read the fifth one, that's you, that's your life. And so in our church, we have taught our people to do handing over prayer, which means very easy, it's very easy. Like this girl here, you know, she got a broken heart. Uh, you know, she hand over that heart to the Lord. Whatever there is date, you can hand over to the Lord. A date relationship, you know, uh, you have a disease that can't be, can't be cured. Uh, you have some struggle that can't be solved. You have a financial bondage that seems impossible. All this you just hand over. And hand over is just so simple. You say, Lord, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to surrender this to you. Handing over is surrendering. So handing over prayer, if you can go to some of my sermon and some of my uh, the lessons that I have taught on handing over prayer, is on YouTube, and you can uh, read them. Uh, I mean, uh, you can listen to them, and you can learn them. I might compile into a book and later on share this with you. And then, of course, meditation. 
Meditation is very important. Meditation is not the Eastern religion one. This one, as we meditate upon the word of God, we become full of the presence of God. So one thing about meditation and about prayer is that before the truth will set you free, it tends to make you miserable. You know what? A lot of uh, struggle uh, would come during meditation and during prayer because the Lord wants to transform me and he wants to do surgery on me. You see, I, I used to be a man with a very hostile spirit, very hostile spirit. And I will challenge you, you know, and I will, when I look at you, I will size you up first. So you are a businessman. I'm a businessman. I look at the car that you drive. I look at the car that I drive, you know. And then if you drive Mercedes, I have a Mercedes. Then I look at the year, which year? Yours is old Mercedes, mine is brand new. You know, things like that. So all this God got to take and pluck up, pluck up because I was so childish. I was so, you know, soulish, so carnal. You know, even as a Christian, I started off as, you know, ordinary and then be, be, became a deacon, became part of the eldership, then became a pastor, you know. And all those times, I continued to struggle with this pride. I don't know about you, but I had big problem with pride. Yeah. The, the earlier you succeed in life, is the worse it's going to be because you just look down on everybody else. You know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Joan, Jane, and Mary are so dumb and so stupid, and you are the brilliant one. Wow, I tell you, God forgive me. And therefore, when you spend time with God, God is going to set you free, but it's going to make you so miserable. Okay? So when the light shines, the dirt will appear. Intimacy with God will lead you to encounter grief first before you encounter peace. But brothers, sisters, both grief and peace are by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I thank God he grieved me. I thank God. And he's still doing so. I'm still doing so. There's still areas of my life still not right. All right. And, and, and sometimes, you know, subconsciously, all this bitterness might, might come back. And the Lord says, uh, uh, watch it, watch it. So, so intimacy with God, let me go through again. It will make you miserable. All right. So two things that you need to do. You need to meditate. You need to do handing over prayer. Yeah. Okay, what do you hand over? What do you hand over? When you hand over, you hand over disgrace, your hidden shame, some of you, all right? You're out there, you are a deacon, you are a leader in the marketplace, but you are still watching pornography or you are still indulging in prostitution or you are still gambling or you are still drinking like a fish, you know, or, or you are a gambler. So all these are not, all these are, you are, you, you are, you are doing it quietly. It's a disgrace. So what you do, you hand over hidden shame, hidden guilt, and the hurt, right? You hand over, it's handed over. It's not yours anymore. Then you hand over unrestrained feelings, uncontrolled thoughts. Uh, so there's a last full thought that come in, hand over straight away, okay? There's an angry thought that come in, hand over straight away. And there's somebody that you don't like, hand over straight away. It's not that you must like him. In fact, you must love him. The Lord said, love your enemy. So the, the, let's say somebody just cursed you. When you hand over, you bless him. And blessing is an act of the will. It's not how you feel. You can feel miserable. You can feel lousy. You, you just don't like the, the, that guy. But in your will, you have to say, Lord, I bless this person. And the more you start to bless this person, the Holy Spirit, now this is my own experience. The Holy Spirit begin to reveal the weaknesses of this guy. Like one man was very rude to me all the time. And then when I began to, to pray for him, he said, then the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me his childhood. It was a very painful, hurtful childhood. And when he grew up, he was fighting for himself. And all the time he was trying to prove himself. And even now he, he is in his 60s, he's still trying to prove himself and always talk with such bravado, you know, talk with such, you know, pride about his past and all that. And always wanting people to know how how how, how strong. And 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 naturally, my my reaction would be uh, I retaliate against such uh, people. I say this is blatant pride. But yet the Lord said, "Can you love me? Uh, love him with my love." And the love of God is agape love. So so instead of hating him, instead of disliking him, 
I began to pity him. I began to pray for him even more because I said, this man is in bondage. So it's a paradigm shift. It's a different way of looking at things. So these uncontrolled thoughts, I handed over. And God gave me Holy Spirit talk. 